Hi, I'm John Refrano for Boris TV, and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at camera moves. This is exciting for Vegas users because we've never had a camera inside of Vegas before. So now we've got this camera that we can use to move around these 3D objects. And in particular, I'm going to show you why you want to use a camera rather than just using transforms. So let's take a look at how we create an animation like this. I'm going to start with an empty project. We'll insert a video track, insert some empty, an empty event, and then apply uh, BCC extruded text. Now the nice thing about these BCC plugins is you know, once you learn some of the common parameters on one of them, you've learned it on all. So you learn camera moves once and then you could use the camera on all of these plugins. Let's launch the text window and enter in our text. Give it a second to render. Okay, now I just want to change the extrusion because I like a little smoother bevel. We use the convex bevel. We'll add a front material. I like this nice blue plastic because it shines uh, and it'll show you some of the lighting. Uh, and then we'll move to the transforms and just scale this a bit. I'll change my master scale. What you might think is, well, why do I need to use the camera at all? Why can't I just move around in transforms? Look, I've got this position on the Z. Uh, and I can take the position, I can move f further away, and I can move closer. And what happens when I move closer? What, it all went dark, right? What happened there? Uh, what happened was I moved beyond the light that was in the scene. Uh, and you can say, well, I'll just adjust the lights. Yeah, but you'll be adjusting lights all day if you're going to move things around a lot. So uh, the camera will actually move the camera within the scene so that the lights stay what they are. So let me show you the difference right away between using the positional Z and the camera. So in the transforms, once again, I'm using the Z, I come beyond the lights, and if I want to zoom in on this text, uh, I'm out of luck. I have to go move my lights. I go down to the built-in camera, and now I'll change the position of the camera itself. And when I change the camera position, the lights stay where they are. Right? And everything is well lit all the way up to or and beyond you know, where I am on the screen. So once you've got your scene in place, you've got all your lights in place, you might be using two or three lights in, in Boris, uh, you don't have to worry about that. You move the camera around the scene, all the lights stay where you are, all the objects uh, stay where you want them to be. So while we're here, let's look at these camera modes. There are three modes for using the camera, three models. There's a position, an orbit, and a pan camera. They can only be used one at a time. You'll notice when position is uh, selected, you get this first set of parameters. The rest of the parameters are grayed out. When you select orbit, you enable the next set of parameters for orbit, uh, and the final two are grayed out. And then when you select the pan camera, everything except the final two uh, are grayed out. So let me take them in reverse order, as long as we're here with the pan camera. The pan camera is a true pan. It's as if you were sitting on a tripod, and so as you move left and right, it's not dollying the camera or uh, trucking the camera left and right. It's really panning the camera on a positional point. The pan distance is how far away you are from the object, but when you pan, it still pans across the object. Right? We're still panning as if we are in, uh, this, uh, you know, on this tripod panning the camera. So if you want to do that kind of move, then you want to use the pan camera. Next is the orbit camera. The orbit camera has uh, an orbit radius. So this is going to orbit around the object. It has an orbit radius so that you can move further away. Uh, and, and actually, what you're doing is, is, is increasing the radius, right? So by increasing the radius uh, that the camera moves, you obviously have to move the camera back to get a bigger radius. Uh, and then you use tumble, which is moving the camera uh, along the X. Uh, you use spin, which is moving the camera along the Y. And you use rotate, which is moving the camera along the uh, Z. Now, you might say, well, you know, what's the difference here? I'm looking, looking at this. Uh, notice that we have highlighting on the left. Now, if I were to um, actually rotate this, again, we'll, we'll go up to uh, the transforms, uh, and I'm going to do rotate on the Z. And you'll notice that now the O in the moves is highlighted because I'm physically moving the object and so the lighting affects it differently. But when I spin the camera uh, and I rotate the camera, watch this highlight over the M, now I'm going to rotate the camera and 
Oh, the highlight is still over the M because actually I'm now upside down on my head with the camera, right? I've now rotated the camera so that the camera's upside down, but the lighting is in the same place. So these are the subtle differences between moving the camera and actually moving the object with the transforms. Uh, so this gives you this nice um, orbital uh, view of things. Last, we'll go to the position camera that has the most choices. Uh, and so every one of these has a zoom. There's a zoom up to up to 10 uh, x, which is a which is a regular zoom in, like you zoom your zoom lens, as opposed to position, which is uh, dollying the camera forward and back, or the position x and y, which is trucking the camera left and right. And position as well is positioning the camera physically closer or further away from uh, the object. Now with that, we've got the camera orientation and there are two styles of orientation. There's free orientation and there's target orientation. And so when we have free orientation, we've got tumble, spin, and rotate, which are kind of like X, Y, and Z. Uh, if I tumble the camera, and I'm holding my control key as I move these so I get very uh, subtle movements, you'll notice as I tumble the camera down, the object seems to move up in the scene. As I tumble the camera up, the object seems to move down in the scene. I'll double click to zero that out. Same thing with spin. As I spin the camera to the left, the object moves to the right. As I spin the camera to the right, the object appears to move to the left. So remember, when you're using tumble, spin, and rotate, you're not tumble, spin, and rotating the object, you're tumble, spin, and rotating the camera, right? So if the camera's looking right, everything else starts to move left. Uh, and the same thing for rotate, right? This is rotating the camera around the object. And once again, the highlight stays where it is, because I'm still physically rotating this camera. The other option I have is target. When uh, target is invoked, these three get grayed out and the target indicator opens up. Uh, and then the target indicator is kind of the same thing, but I get to say where I'm going to place my camera. So now I'm going to target the left side, I'm going to target the right side, I'm going to target up, I'm going to target down, right, and, and do the same and move things in the Z space. Uh, and so that is for the target camera. So you have the ability to either use a specified target um, or you can come in free form. Now, now obviously the target is gonna stay on the object. The spin will spin way out of control, right? You can spin this thing all the way around. So with the free form, you have um, a free form of spin, 360 plus degrees. Target is gonna keep it within the, uh, within the object. Um, and that is for the options on the positional camera. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can animate this camera. Uh, so I think I want to animate the positional camera. So I want to move, what I want to do is, uh, I'll recreate that initial animation. So I move the, the camera very close, and then I move the camera across, and then I moved it back to a neutral position, and when I moved it back to the neutral position, I rotated it um, as I moved it. Uh, so let's do all of those moves. In order to do that, I'm going to keyframe the position of the camera. So I, I click on my animate button and that will open up this little animation timeline. I'm just going to close this down a little bit because we're limited on space. Matter of fact, I could probably bring my tracks down because there's not much happening with the tracks. Um, so the position I'm going to, I'm going to animate, I'm going to animate my Z position because I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, move in, and then I'm going to uh, animate my rotate because I want to make it spin. So I turn on those three keyframes, and then I get those keyframes down here, and they are locked on the first position, right? This is the first positional keyframe is already selected. So what I want to do is set up my initial positions with these keyframes. And for the initial positions, um, I want to move the Z in. So let me, let me go up here and uh, get position in there. I'm going to move in the Z to about there, and then I'm going to move my position over to this first C. And that's going to be my first keyframe. Now I, I want that to happen, let's see, this is, uh, I think I want that to happen for perhaps uh, two seconds. And then we're going to pan, do a two second pan across. So I move the timeline indicator here, right, and I, I could type in, I, I've got it 129, which is pretty close, but I could type in uh, two seconds exactly if I want. Uh, and then I can either add a keyframe or I can just start to move things uh, and Vegas will automatically add keyframes for me. So I'm going to add a keyframe to move over to the right. Now you're not seeing 
uh, this indicator move because I don't have uh, sync cursor to media timeline. So it's important that I turn that on and then move the cursor over. Now it's moved over to where, where I want it. So if you ever see that not moving, you want to put your sync cursor to timeline on. Okay. Uh, and then uh, in about another two seconds, so we'll say at four, I want to do the full pullback. Matter of fact, maybe I'll do the pullback a little bit quicker. I'm going to do the pullback at uh, 2.15. I'm sorry, 3.15. Right, a minute, second and a half. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to make sure I have keyframes for all these. So I want to, I want to go back here and uh, create a position keyframe because I forgot to do that. So position, click the plus. I want to go down to rotate and click the plus. So I want to make sure I've got keyframes. I don't want the position and the rotate to change from uh, the first to the second. Then I want to move over to the next uh, set of keyframes. And we said we we're going to have those at 315. And again, I want to start creating keyframes there. So I'm going to highlight position, create a keyframe. I'm going to highlight position Z, create a keyframe. Uh, and rotate, create a keyframe. All right, so that will move across, and then while it's going from the S back to the original position. So the original position with the Z is what I want to change next, and I'm just going to double click and get that back. All right, so that's going to snap my Z back. Uh, I also want to change the position on the X, so I'm going to double click there. That's going to snap me back to the middle. And what I want to do with my rotation, I'm going to highlight this rotation keyframe here. And I want to go to rotation and I want to type in 360 because I want it to rotate 360 degrees. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to click play from the start and we'll see what we got. Here it is panning across, moves back and rotates while it moves back. So that was that original move uh, that I created at the opening. So you can see with just a little bit of planning and, and thinking like the camera, right? Making sure that when you move the camera left, other things are going to move to the right because you're moving the camera, not the objects. You can plan your camera moves. Uh, and then now I've got this close up moving back. The lights are all in the right position. Everything is where it should be. So that wraps it up. If you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Rafrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.